Hello, welcome back. And today we are going to look at the basic interface of Fusion 2.5. What I have running is the developer version, but all three versions have the same interface. So whatever version you're running, this is all applicable. And across the top you see your general file menu with all of your various commands. One important thing is under help there is a tutorial link and this will load up a very easy to follow step-by-step -step tutorial for creating the Choco Break game. This is just one of your classic breakout games. So if you haven't yet and you really want to get a jump start this will really help you out if you just simply follow step-by-step what to do and make the Choco Break game. Now we also have an awesome forum online and there are thousands of users and any questions you post will be replied to very quickly. You can see we have a Fusion technical support. If you're using iOS or Android we have specific sections for them and everybody's extremely friendly so don't feel shy posting up a beginner question because everybody's had them and you'll quickly get helped. An interesting area is the file archive and in here people post up various examples of how to do something and you know here's a simple cave story like interface file somebody posted up. So you can find a lot of stuff to tear apart and look at in here along with there is a tutorial link over here on the side and website must be busy today which is a good thing uh, tutorials alright inside the tutorial page you'll find a bunch of tabs across the top you kinda of sorted out in what level of user might be interested and all of these you can just download directly if you're a beginner and you want to learn about scrolling we have a scrolling tutorial we have an INI &I tutorial all kinds of interesting things in here some of my favorite ones um, I think are under the intermediate tab and glob wars this is a great tutorial and I even learned a lot when I was helping Koo Bear develop this one. He has some pretty nice tricks in it. But you can see there's quite a few different kinds of games in here. Hidden Object Game, Castle Defender Game. So if you're interested in a specific game, we might already have a tutorial about it, or you can use these to learn some techniques to apply to whatever type of game you're interested in creating. All right, let's close this guy down, and let's get back over to the Fusion interface and you see a workspace toolbar here you see a properties toolbar down below it all of these things can be moved around they're kind of where I like them right now if I put my mouse over the layer toolbar it pops open these are different layers which will be on your frames we'll see that in a minute and we have a library toolbar and down here it comes with a whole bunch of pre-made graphics so it gives you a little quick start for doing your own games and applications. Let's close this guy down. And I am just going to click the new icon here. And that starts a new application. We see application one, frame one. An application is your main container for your game or app. And then your frames are individual screens. And you can have as many frames as you want if I click on application one we see down here that the properties window now refers to the properties of application one and there's various different settings here one interesting setting to take a note of right now is your build type this is the type of file you want to build so right now it's sent to Windows executable if I click on it sorry that kinda of goes off the screen here a little bit there are different build types that I can build and we have an SWF, we have an Android, 
XNA and you can't see it on the screen capture here but there's also iOS and HTML5. So it is a nice idea to know what you want to build in advance even though you can switch it anytime um, what you select here will filter your objects in the object box so it will only show you objects relative to that runtime so if I pick Android it would only show me objects that I could use on my Android application so there's a little bit of thinking involved if you want to do something truly cross cross-platform which what I mean by that is I select Android I do file build application and I build my APK and then I come back and I go well I also want to do an iOS and I do file build application now it builds an iOS Xcode package so if you planned ahead and did a little bit of research and made sure all your objects were relative to both of those platforms that is how easy it is to make a cross-platform game right now I'm gonna set this to Windows EXE because that has the most objects available since it's the oldest and most flexible runtime if I click on frame number one notice now our properties display the properties for frame number one we have different size settings transitions you know various tabs for each of these give it a name for example if I click back on application one and I just wanted to call this my game you will see now that it says my game up here okay so we have over on this side is the storyboard editor and this shows a visual representation of our list of frames so I could change the name here and call this uh, we'll just call it hello for some reason and now it says hello there if I click on here of course in my properties now for frame number one which is named hello it says the name is hello so that's pretty easy and non painful if I wanted some more frames I could simply click on the number here and you see now I have a total of three frames or I could even go in here and I could click what could I click I could click up here and go new frame and now I have four frames so there's multiple ways to do every need that you need to do so let's open up frame number one I'm gonna slide this over a little bit so we have a little bit more room I have my screen set kinda of small so I can capture everything on the video without having a huge screen file so hopefully that's not too annoying now we have frame number one which is hello selected and we see the white area whatever we put on that white area is going to be shown to the player and this gray area is basically off screen holding area now how to add an object I can just right click and I can select insert object and don't worry if you don't have this many objects because this copy of fusion has every single object ever made which there are tons of them and more coming every day you can see we have different lists of objects over here if you're just one HTML5 objects you can get those those are just specific HTML5 objects but a lot of other objects also work on HTML5 so don't think you just have two objects there that is a little bit confusing but it's similar to XNA these are XNA only these are HTML5 only if I had selected HTML5 and I did all objects then we would see all of the objects I can use on HTML5 so there are quite a bit of objects like this active object is for all runtimes I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna click and place it on our screen now an active object is your basic building block for any type of interactive game let's move this over so we can see some properties here real quick um, I have my active object selected and we can see in the properties toolbar that we have the properties for our active object and the first thing we're going to do it is we're going to give our active object a name and we're going to call our active object um, 
how about we call it Fred, just for a name. So we can see in our object shelf here, we have our object named Fred. And if we hover over this, you can see it gives the name Fred. If we click on Fred, of course, we now have properties for Fred. So whatever you have selected, the properties are going to be displayed. Now, what kind of properties does Fred have? Well, Fred's an active object. We know that because that's what we placed on the screen. And you can see it has an XY position, its size, a movement, if we want moved Fred to move around, some runtime options. You don't have to worry about a lot of this, oops, until we get more advanced using the software. Um, alterable values and alterable strings, those are like variables, and those variables are attached to Fred. So if we wanted to give, say we wanted to have alterable value A and we wanted to name it health, and we wanted to give it a value, a starting value of 10, now that variable is attached to that object. So we can manipulate that in the events. We'll see that in a second. Qualifiers, you can put a bunch of objects in one group and then test that group all together. We'll see that in a future episode also. I just wanted you to kind of know that. So let's give Fred a movement. And so if we click on the movement type here in the properties, I'm just going to give him a bouncing ball movement. And you can see there's quite a few movements to choose from. You can also have multiple movements. So I could just click on this plus over here. And I could click on this, and I could go OK. And now movement number two, I wanted it to be eight direction. So now Fred has two movements attached to him. Movement one, which is a bouncing ball. Movement two, which is eight directions. Just wanted to kind of point that out, that you're not limited to one movement on one object. All right, so if we run our game right now, if I just go Run Application, you saw Fred just zoomed off the screen and we are ready to make him bounce around the screen. Okay, so let's go over to our event editor and I'm just going to click this icon up here. Now this is just if-then statements. If these conditions are true, then do any of the actions underneath the icons when that's true. So there's Fred. Whatever objects we add to the screen are going to show up in here automatically. And we have a bunch of system objects. There's our sound control. Here's if we want to jump to other frames, timers, interacting with the mouse and keyboard. Those are all automatic. And anything we add will then just be added. So what we want to do is we want to make Fred bounce off the sides of the screen. So if I just click on this, I can find Fred in my new condition box and I want to test for a position of the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. So when Fred leaves the play area, what do I want to happen? Well, I want Fred to bounce. So if I go under Fred, I can go Movement and Bounce. So running our application right now, you can see he bounces off the sides. Now we want to do something a little bit else. We want to do the, cl the classic hello world type of thing. So let's go back over to our frame editor. And off screen up here, let's insert another object. And let's just filter out the text objects and get a string. Okay, and we'll click that right up there. Now I'm going to go into the strings property. See, I have it selected here. And I can go over to the text, which is this first tab under settings. And I can type in hello world. And click. Uh. Now, what do we want to do? When Fred hits the side, let's move hello world to the middle of the screen. Okay. So let's go back over to the event editor. 
and I can find our string here. See, it's already added automatically. And I can add a condition, an action under it. And I can select position of the object. And I'm just going to click approximately in the middle. All right, so let's see what happens here. Run application. And you see when it hit the side, the hello world showed up. All right, so let's make it a little bit fancier. And let's go back over to the frame editor and select hello world. And let's give it a movement. And we'll also give it a bouncing ball movement. And I'm going to give its initial direction to straight down. So let's see what happens right now. So we'll run our application. And you see that every time it hits the side, another hello world is moved to the middle. And it tries to go off the screen. So that, in a nutshell, is basically how you get around in Fusion 2, how you create new frames, how you add objects to your screen, and just the very basics of how you make a condition and how you make some actions. So what I suggest you do now is go through the Choco Break tutorial, if you haven't already. And if you've already done that, maybe look at some of those tutorials that are posted online and start getting a feel for that. In the next episodes, we are going to start looking at each individual object and different functions and capabilities that it has. Thanks a lot.